Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. A couple of really fun things this week. So first off, we started our pumpkin and squash harvest this morning. So we'll have a video out here probably before this video comes out because now we're putting these out on Sunday. So it's all gonna be really weird, yeah. like timing wise. But um, you guys seem to really like the idea of posting the recaps on this Highlights channel on Sunday. So I think that's what we're gonna plan to do. So much easier for us too. Yeah, it just like, I don't know. There's Every too time much we make a little small change, you guys are so great about rolling with however we need to do things, and we appreciate that. Um, but that just alleviates a lot of stress, especially if we can get the recap filmed on a Monday, and then you know Ken has a lot of time because he's editing all of our daily videos too, and then we have to you know shoot the videos and all that stuff. Anyway, so pumpkin and squash harvest this morning, and then um, our concrete was poured this morning for the cut flower shed i don't know is that what you're gonna call it probably just the shed because we don't have a shed it'll be simple and pretty anyway the concrete is in place we have windows the windows started to arrive yesterday uh the shakes are here there will be shakes involved and um the door is what we're going to be waiting on the longest i think oh really i heard from eddie yeah but we'll see we'll see what happens hopefully by winter yeah. Maybe we can throw some lights on it. I don't By know. next spring. Also, Jerry and Jenny from Creekside Nursery are gardening with Creekside. They have a nursery garden center growing operation in North Carolina. What town is it? It's close to um, where we were, right? Do you know what town it is? I, it's like totally... Uh, yeah, it's like the name of another town or, or something that... Uh, like. Does that make sense? It's like like Las Vegas... Montana. No, it's, it's not it? that, but you know what I mean? It's like, I oh, should, that's I, weird. Like, I cannot remember. Hold on. Not that the town name really matters. They're from North Carolina. It's a different growing climate than we have here. Maybe it's like... Dallas. Dallas. Yes. Yeah. Dallas, anyway, North Carolina. Anyway, they are actually about 10 minutes away from us at this point. We're getting texts from them, but they are on their way here to help us set up our greenhouse so that we can heat it and climate control it. And then the uh, sides, like we'll have automatic sides that will raise and lower based on temperature. They've done it to one of, no, a couple of theirs or one of their greenhouses. Anyway, they're going to help us with that whole process here this week. So I don't know what this week's video schedule is going to actually look like and it won't matter because this video will go on after that. <laughs> anyway, let's just get into last week's video. That was really quick. Uh, okay, the first one is fall flowers and pumpkins on the west side formal garden. So that was a project I started, actually hadn't really planned on doing it, laid out the plants and then completely changed my mind not completely, but semi-completely changed my mind right in the middle of the process. So I planted up underneath all five of the red point maples in kind of a candy corn style with yellow snapdragons, orange and white pansies, and then some really pretty ornamental kale. And then we went to a farm stand and picked up some pumpkins and stuff to kind of go along with that theme. And it's look, it looks really cute. And we've never planted that area up for fall, so it was kind of a treat to be able to do that. Uh, top comment was from YouTube Girl 86 Laura, I was just appointed head of the Ministry of Gardening at my church. The landscaper under contract only mows the lawn, but does not fuss with anything else. So it's up to us to bring up ideas for how to make the grounds more beautiful with color. Every idea I brought up to the group came from you. That's awesome. Like dividing the property into zones for easier maintenance, providing seasonal interest in the plantings, which annuals would look great in our front entrance according to season, which proven winter's plants provide the best bang for your buck and using an auger for easier planting. Pretty much what would Laura do here? I need lots of prayers for what's ahead of me, and it's as it, it it's a big, beautiful property. Thank you for being the main inspiration of this project. Your instruction and light has reached far corners and will now grace a new church property. Love and blessings, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer, for that comment. That's like the perfect way to start, well, a day, this video, all the things. That's really encouraging to hear, and you will do a great job. Barb said, I'm glad you addressed growing annuals over bulbs. Yes, you are in a dry climate, but why doesn't drip rot the bulbs like those of us in a rainy uh, Seattle climate? Been wondering for the last three years. I watched your wonderful channel. So I did talk about how I've got tulip bulbs planted underneath where I planted all of those annuals. And um, while it's a little bit more tricky to plant things, you still can plant over the top of them. I've never really had a huge issue. Like during that project, I kicked a couple, I ruined probably two bulbs out of a thousand um, and then I kicked a couple up out of holes as I was using the auger but they usually just come up whole and I can just pop them right back down in the hole and it's totally fine um, so I kind of just went over that because I do see questions about that quite often um, but I think the difference is our soil level like our, our soil saturation levels are probably way different here versus Seattle don't you think Erin like with the constant rain 
Like, because we're so dry, like, we drip will run, drip. and our soil will dry out, though, that day. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. It's just, I don't know. It's just not saturated enough. But I would think with the drip running constantly that it would stay more moist. But it is very controlled. It's not like it, it drips all day. It just drips for a finite amount of time, and then yeah. it's done. So it's not like a rain that you maybe get for a couple of days or even a full day. That's a lot of water. Well, and you're right that it is, it's controlled in that it's not the whole area that's getting right. wet. So maybe it kind of disperses as mm -hmm. opposed to if you have rain, just the entire space gets fully saturated. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe, I don't know. Rita said, does Paul stay on with you through the winter as things start to power down? I bet Aaron will need him for the Christmas lights. Yes, Paul is our full-time guy outside and we keep him all year all long. There's always so much to do and he's so incredibly helpful to us. So I'm glad that we we're able to keep them all year. Sandy said, uh, hi, Laura and Erin. Those areas turned out really pretty. I like the added touch of the pumpkins and squash. Do you have any plans to add more to the West Side formal garden? It's been a while since you've done very much over there. True. I also would like to see how the planters by the cold storage are doing. We haven't seen a good update on them since they were planted. Thank you so much for sharing. And Erin, thank you so much for the drone shots. So the single plant, mm -hmm. we should maybe, well, you'll see it in the greenhouse video. You'll see how things are doing in the one plant per pot experiment we've had a little bit of struggle um, with a couple of the things like the super bells I put in there I just super bells and Laura we just nope don't get along we just do not mix even in a single like I planted one super bells in that pot it had no competition and it just still like I just don't have the touch with them and the gomfrina one of them popped like broke off in a windstorm and when you have one plant in a pot and you have that one plant break then you better have a backup <laughs> which i did thankfully it was early enough in the game i still had two plants left and i was able to replace it but it, they are looking pretty good renee said have the boxwoods recovered from the spider mites they look pretty bad <laughs> not really and honestly the the um, boxwoods around the urn in versailles are probably the worst i don't know i think we're gonna have to attack them with something stronger mm -hmm or more frequent. Honestly, we haven't been the best about staying up on spring, so it's partially our fault. Yeah. Well, probably. 100% our fault. <laughs> 90%, 90, 90%, spider mites are hard. Well, I, you know, this year we haven't used anything besides Captain Jack's uh, dead bug brew, mm -hmm. and we haven't even been super consistent with that. No. But, you know, the recommendation is to alternate between multiple different things. Three, usually. Yeah, and we haven't been doing that for no. sure. So, you know, it is our own fault for not not staying on it, but it's just, just so many other things going on that kind of just got away from us this year. Yeah. But they'll all die here soon mm -hmm. with a frost, and then next year we can just That's get what on we a said last year. better regimen. I know, but we, we got to do it. Yeah, we we got to get on a better schedule. Uh, Vicki said, I keep reading that boxwood should not be trimmed this time of year, so I've been letting mine get really straggly looking. Can I trim them now and be okay for spring? Well, it's never a guarantee. I'm trimming mine right now. In fact, we're trying to put together a video one day when I actually get it done. Um, we will have a video out right now in our area. It's getting in like the 40s at night consistently, 40s and 50s. And in the daytime, it's between somewhere in the 60s and the low 80s. That's our, that's like a sweet spot. And we hardly ever hit that for as long as we are. And the 10 day looks just like that. So if I can get all of mine trimmed like stat if I can get them all trimmed and then they have several days before it starts getting colder than that to acclimate then I should be okay but you know one year we trimmed ours we trimmed them too deep first off and then we had a weird cold snap that nobody knew about it went nine degrees like from 40 to nine yeah in one night and it killed big mature trees I mean it killed several inches of our hedging and it probably would have killed our hedging the tops even if they weren't freshly cut, but it killed them worse because they were freshly sure. cut. Um, so there's those things you can't control. I do believe the recommended is to do it in the spring after they've pushed new growth and that new growth that's usually bright green has deepened just a little bit in color before it gets really hot for summertime. But you almost thought like doing it more consistently and kind of keeping that undergrowth or that under layer more exposed on a consistent basis so that it's not as prone to burn. Might yeah, be better. the only thing that that doesn't work with is if you're trying to grow them bigger. You know, you plant smaller plants, mm -hmm. and if you keep them trimmed all the time, they never really have a chance to grow. True. So, like, they almost needed the growth this year, us just not trimming them all year, mm -hmm. because they did need to kind of bulk up a little bit, yeah. especially in Versailles. Yeah, after um, the, the big trim. Yeah, right. We'll so it it's, it's good to give them some. Now, some of the other ones, like the corner 
garden, mm -hmm. that little triangle garden, that's not really one that you want to grow anymore. No. You just want them to stay consistent. Yeah. So those would be good to trim all the time. But I've been half done. <laughs> <laughs> so You've funny. had it half done for like a week now. <laughs> so I got it halfway done and I'm taking off like this much growth. So it's very satisfying, but the hedge trimmers died. Yeah. Like right in the middle of the project, we were filming it and they just, and I thought, well, I need a new battery. So we swapped the battery. Nope. Swapped another battery. Nope. Like the batteries were fine. The hedge trimmers just died. And I was noticing the time before when I was using them that they were pretty like gummed up and we needed to take them apart and clean them. And maybe like they met their end because some of it got in there oh, or sure. it just got like too much and burned up the motor. I mean, they were laboring. Yeah. That <laughs> we well, take you know, you've had those for a lot of years. Yeah. Like five years. Without cleaning them a single time. That's probably yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so those are like half wooly, half super trimmed right now. <laughs> uh, Kylie Janella said, so pretty, will you ever, uh, will there ever be a time you can't plant annuals under your trees due to roots? It's possible. It's not super likely here because it seems like once we start irrigating, like we do have hard pan, but once you start irrigating or if the area is irrigated, it's pretty soft. Mm -hmm. And tree roots do not have a hard time penetrating and going down in, into that soil. And so surface roots just really aren't a huge thing. They are under the ash tree up in the front yard. Yeah, and some of the locust trees, they there's some, some roots, some, roots, some, mm -hmm. some like big ones, uh, but not a lot of real small ones necessarily. No. And you can dodge those pretty easy. Like there'll be a little bit of space between the larger mm -hmm. roots. So you can pop some things in. The hardest area for me to underplant is the tree right in front of me. Um, so it's the maple tree right by our back shade porch. And I don't know how old this tree is. I don't even know, is it a silver maple maybe? I don't know, it throws the helicopters all year and it usually burns about midsummer every year. But it provides so much shade and so I can't, I can't like, justify taking it down yeah. um, and I do love the fall colors beautiful anyway tree, tree roots that one is hard to plant underneath even with little four inch so I typically just don't I just leave it mulch right there uh, next video is spreading compost and planting a new hibiscus variety so we had a couple of friends Gabe and Katie came and visited us from Washington they live around the Seattle area they're super fun people to be with and they came down to visit and they wanted to just do whatever we were doing like normal stuff let's do a normal day so we decided to spread compost that's Put what them to we, work <laughs> yeah that's what we needed to do and we had planned on doing a little bit more than we did in the video but the wind picked up um, which Katie had never experienced a windstorm like come here for a week and you'll experience one. Um, we had gusts up to 50 miles an hour and we were out in it. Like she and I were out watering, trying to get everything. I didn't have anybody here to help that day and it was a weekend. And so we had to get things watered and we were just out, our hair was just like, <laughs> it was like a ratted mess at the end anyway. Um, but it was fun. We got the front uh, area mulched and then I planted a hibiscus the next morning because that was kind of on the docket at, as well. So One Bite Dog said, I'm finally seeing the whole property as one. Thanks, Erin, for the drone shots. I think, like, overwhelmingly, I've seen from you guys, you're liking the drone shots. Well, it's it's fun because there's more and more taking place. Yeah. You know, it's really satisfying to see the mulch mm -hmm. be spread. Uh, and the lines of things kind of starting to come together. Yep. That is satisfying. Karen said, when you're actually putting down mulch, not compost, what type do you use? I'm in Kansas and we have winds also. I have a bad time finding mulch that doesn't blow away or deteriorate quickly. Ours deteriorates quickly yeah. because I like finer mulch. And, you know, we've used a lot of different things throughout the years. I used to only use compost um, as my mulch, but that's when we had a smaller garden and it made more sense at that point. And then we moved to this garden. I'm like, well, we can't afford mulch as a top grass in this garden. There's our compost rather. Did I say mulch? Yeah. I meant compost. Which you can mulch with compost, which right, is kind I know. of, a, you know. <laughs> Interchangeable. Um, but we've tried, I mean, we've gotten bulk mulch. Yeah. You know, we've gotten um, d like different colored mulches. We've got the non, you know, just like the straight up wood mulch. Uh huh. Most I feel of it like is we've some... tried so many different things and haven't really landed on any one thing that's no. like, oh, this is the one. As long as it's not red. Yeah. As long as it doesn't appear red and even like brown mulches appear red to me. So it has to be more like along the lines of a black looking mulch or a dark colored mulch, something that doesn't lighten up. Yeah. I don't know, but it's usually some variation of a shredded wood. Yeah. Type of mulch. 
Debbie said, what are the two piles on the left as you enter your lane just before the new driveway, please? Those are piles, well, one of them is wood chips that we're working on spreading that um, Natural Tree Service dropped off for us uh, to use. And then the other pile is all of the sod that I've been cutting, you know, to cut in the new flower beds and to cut the, um, the grass pathway to the cut flower garden. We're putting all of our like chunks of sod that are extra right there, any extra soil from like driveway stuff. All, you know, all of it just ends up in that pile and Chad is going to come take that whole pile away. He's got all the equipment to lift it up easily and put it in a truck and take it away <laughs> at some point. It's just as unfortunate, Aaron, that that happened to be the good dumping spot, like right in the entry of the property. Yeah, right. Well, it's convenient. <laughs> it is con very convenient, yeah. Christina said, did Aaron Photoshop the sky in for you? I wouldn't put it past him, LOL. Uh, he did not this time. It actually stopped me in my tracks during that video. I'm like, dang, yeah, this me sky too. is blue today. And every once in a while, like today it's blue, but it's not as blue as it was that day. Something Maybe it was just it. the contrast of the blue sky and the white clouds. Maybe. There were just extra white clouds, yeah. and so it created more... Can you, like, save that as an image and then use that <laughs> later on? Well, it's not that hard. It takes me maybe, like, 10 minutes to Photoshop a thumbnail with a blue sky, which I have done. Cheater. Uh, <laughs> do you feel like well, I don't you know sit how, on a throne of I don't know how you would do that for video, because your perspective is constantly changing. Yeah. It would look super fake in video. I mean... I'm sure there's ways you can do it, but yeah. that's way beyond what I can do. <laughs> you should try, Aaron. One day on a really, really bad, like, <laughs> snowy, yeah. crappy day, see if you can do it. Linda said, I'm 73 years old and not really strong. Um, do you think that I can handle an auger like you used? I'm worried that it might spin, or, spin me around. I have a lot of plants to put out this fall. You know, in our auger video, which I think is going to be included here, it is, um, I did say that if you have ever considered yourself to have weak upper body strength or if it's something that like you're wondering about if you have a question about it I would probably not recommend that you use it because I have heard of people breaking their wrists um, getting like my mom when she very first tried the big auger with you know the nine inch diameter auger with the big drill the stud and joist drill it spun around and hit her in the leg like it laid her out it hurt bad yeah you have to be ready for it you have to that's why i look so weird when i'm using it it is like a power stance you have to like you have to like get down and kind of squat i do anyway because i yeah i'm not like the strongest person and so i probably would say maybe the smaller augers but the big ones are pretty are pretty heavy and I don't want anybody getting hurt because I recommend that you get an auger. Tammy said, will you get weeds in the spring where the compost was laid? Yep. How do you, how do you keep it clean looking and not weedy? We have a very uh, organized zoning system for our garden, uh, which helps us keep on top of weeds and general garden maintenance. We did a whole series about it this summer where I actually worked through the zones in the garden and showed you all the things that I do during our zone maintenance. And then I've done a video specifically just discussing the whole topic or the whole idea of zoning your garden space and as we add more sections up in the south garden there um, they will be added into our organizational system and hopefully we'll stay on top of it however big areas like that if you can get yourself some captain jack's deadweed brew it's the active is like caprylic and capric acid i think it's for organic gardening and um, it works really well if you mix it at the highest ratio the highest percentage which is like nine or twelve it's on the label go ahead and mix it up at the highest strength that you can yeah i'm not even sure if i would recommend the pre-mixed stuff you know what i mean you yeah. can you can buy it it's and like i don't know rate. if it's in the highest ratio or not uh -huh. um i would i probably just recommend the concentrate and yeah. mix it yourself and use a sticker yeah, spreader Use a, sticker. Yeah, like the turbo sticker or something like that. It's a surfactant. It helps uh, the deadweed brew adhere to the leaves instead of beating up and rolling off. Jill said, what's the difference between mulch versus compost? So basically, mulch is a top dress not full of soil nutrition. Compost is typically a soil additive, like you amend your soil with it and it's full of good stuff for your soil. Um, it helps with things like water retention or water drainage. Um, it's a really good thing to help condition your soil. Mulch doesn't really do that. Mulch will break down and, and help a little bit, but it's not full of the same things that compost is. Most people don't use compost as a mulch. We did in this case, I used to always use compost as a top dress. My parents use compost as a top dress. We've showed you their garden, like kind of proof is in the pudding and their garden is gorgeous. Um, so, uh, you know, sometimes it makes sense to do that. And, uh, you know, I think 
in most cases mulch looks better than compost because most compost won't retain any kind of dark color. It usually uh, bleaches out really fast and looks kind of gray and dull. Um, so there's that if you want it to be like really sharp looking all the time. Yeah. Next video was planting five more fall containers. So I had the two containers that kind of flank our opening where we park our cars, the two right by our black bench and one in our vegetable garden. And I planted them all kind of different. The one by the parking area has the triple tier juniper topiaries in them. So I had just cleaned the super tunias out and I added in hookahs and sage and ivy and pansies. I got a lot to fit in those pots. And then the two little urns next to our black bench, I used limelight hydrangea blooms as the centerpiece that I cut off of our shrubs up front. I think it turned out really pretty. I left the plum dandy alternanthera and the lamium in there from our summer planting, and so they were already full and beautiful. And then I added in a brunera, queen of hearts, a white cabbage, and white pansies. And then the pot in our vegetable garden, we went out and cut some corn stalks. I used those as the centerpiece and then just surrounded it with red snapdragons and orange pansies. Whew. That was a lot to remember. Jana said, it's no longer me saying to my husband, remember those videos I told you I was watching about a gardener in Oregon? Now it's just, you know what Laura did today? <laughs> Love the idea of using cut hydrangeas in your containers. You both are just uh, Laura and Aaron at my house now. And the things I've learned over the last year has my husband saying my gardens look just as nice. Not quite, but I'm loving the process. Best lesson I learned this last year. Put my bulbs in between perennials. It made such a difference. Janice, it makes me really happy to hear that you're loving the process because that is mostly what gardening is, is process, isn't it? Yeah. Like the more I do it, the more I'm like, well, we enjoy our finished product for like five minutes and then the weather takes <laughs> it out and then you have to like kind of regroup yeah, and plan right. it, you know? It it's never just ends. a constant, everything is just constantly evolving all the time. Uh, Patricia said, Laura, is your John Deere Gator gas or electric? And which do you recommend? Oh, I, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with the gas, but I highly recommend the electric Gator. Um, that's just because that's the only one I, I have experience with. We actually liked ours so much from last year. Now that we have, you know, Paul out here, we actually bought a second one this year. Um, and it's, it's one of the better decisions we made in terms of what to buy for the garden. Uh, we have them in constant use. I mean, at least one is used every single day of the week. And then when Paul's here, we have two going, you know, five days a week. I mean, it's just insane how much we use them and the charge lasts forever. We have to plug them in like maybe every two weeks, uh -huh. even with how much use they get. Um, I like the fact that they don't get, they're not loud. We have neighbors and I did not want to be an annoying neighbor, especially because I knew how much we were going to be using them. I like that they don't have a cab because they're in and out. Like you can hop, you know, in and out really easily. I used the dump feature on the bed so many times. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I cannot speak high enough about the electric gator. <laughs> I do, however, I mean, there's always the little things, right? So uh, it didn't keep me from wanting to buy a second one, but they don't have power steering. Hopefully that's something that they add in the future because it is, I'm used to it now, but it is kind of hard to turn them. And then uh, Aaron, you would rather have like more suspension. You think that they're yeah, pretty Yeah, there's not enough suspension. I think, um, is there a little bit of suspension in the front, but nothing in the back, I think is what it is. I totally don't even notice it. So that's yeah. not one of my things. It could be a smoother ride for sure. But we're so bumpy anyway around here. Like there's a lot of, it's well, not smooth. No, I don't think we're bumpy around here. In fact, I think we're, I mean, think about someone who has, you know, 20 acres like backwoods well, and they've yeah. got rocks and well, I guess that it get, would be bumpier than we have our, here. Our place is flat as a pancake, it, you know, in comparison. I go through like our, our paths through the cut flower garden. I'm like, dang, this is kind of bumpy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we got the mulch a little thick in this spot. <laughs> if by bumpy okay, you well, mean I said that, super, super flat, then yes, it is bumpy. <laughs> Get an electric gator, you will love it. One thing I don't know is how much it'll cost to replace all the batteries, because at some point those will go out and you know that could be a couple thousand dollars. It could be 10 years down the road, it could be five years down the road, I just don't know how long batteries will last. Sure. I mean, batteries just, they don't last right. forever. I didn't think about that. So that will be an extra cost. But you know, I don't know if there'd be other maintenance costs with a, mm -hmm. a gas, um, gator as well sure. so who knows we did test drive a gas one that had a cab on it it was so loud and the cab is such a pain to get in and out of i'm super happy with ours 
Uh, Deborah said, love them all and using the hydrangea stems since they're no longer live plants, I suppose they'll just start looking more fallish or esque as you say as they dry out. Do you use any wilt stop on them? No. Uh, we also live in an area prone to 50 mile an hour windstorms. So how will they withstand those winds if they turn into dried hydrangea stems? You know, in the area they're at, they will get wind blown and I mean, We'll have to see what happens, but they should be okay. As long as you cut the stems long enough to where they're not just, you know, in the soil this much, if they're all the way to as far down as you can get those stems, um, that is helpful. They're also kind of in a network together. They're kind of interlocked with each other and then the other plants in there. So that helps keep them in check and they won't really turn more fall-esque. Um, because I picked them at the stage they're in, they all feel papery already. If you pick them while the, the petals still feel supple on any point of the bloom panicle, you might experience some wilting. Uh, they probably will brown, but at this stage, they'll probably stay looking exactly how they looked when I cut them, which is awesome. And the, the wind is starting to come up. Okay, so 84 today, 64 tomorrow mm. is the high. 20 degree drop in a day. So, Louise said, do you keep all your garden pots out throughout the winter? Do you find they break once the soil freezes? No, actually, it is not recommended to leave your pots out in the winter. Like that's not the good steward thing to do with your pots. Um, but we do because, I mean. We're probably mild enough we can get away with that. Also, we don't get a lot of rain and then hard and then freezing, freeze, yeah. which I think a lot of other areas do get. Where would we put them? I mean. The pots? Yeah. Well, you could cover them. Well, I suppose you could do that. <laughs> That's like the thing to do is, is cover your cover concrete yeah. and terracotta or move it in if, if you yeah. can't move it. <laughs> I like one how you're way, just like, one way can't, only. <laughs> can't be done. You <laughs> just got to leave it out. <laughs> That's how my brain works. <laughs> so funny. Uh, Alicia said, when should you pop your container perennials in the landscape before it's too late in the season? Or do you just keep them in the pots and cut them down before it snows? You know, you can do a couple of different things. You can pretty much pop them out of your containers at any point. As long as you can dig a hole in the ground, you can still plant them out in the ground. I think they're safer in the ground than they are in pots throughout the winter um, for a couple of reasons. One, they have more insulation around their root ball. Also, too, they'll uh, receive more moisture, possibly. You know, a lot of us kind of forget about needing to water things in pots, especially if you've cut it back and you don't really see it. So it's really not in the front of your, your mind to do it. Um, so if you're not really diligent about keeping your containers watered that have perennials and things in them that you want to winter over, it's really likely that they won't survive because they still do need to have uh, consistent moisture. But uh, anyway, that said, you can do that. You can cut them back, put a reminder in your phone every two weeks to go out and throw a little water in it. Doesn't need to be super wet, just enough moisture to keep the root ball safe. I know that's really vague, isn't it? I do think though that putting them out into the garden, planting them in the soil is probably better than keeping them in containers. In fact, we're gonna be doing a huge amount of perennial and shrub moving here fairly soon. Mm -hmm. um, everything's looking still so good, but we need to get going on the stuff behind the Hartley and get it out onto the, the new property, the South Garden, um, so that it has a chance, I guess, a little bit of a chance to sit there and root in um, because we will be seeing some big changes around the Hartley, hopefully. <laughs> if we ever get it to that point yeah. um, of landscaping that this next spring. And I actually kind of want to go into winter not seeing stuff around it so I can visualize it better. I visualize better at it with a blank slate. I just do. Amy's Gardenstead said, my favorite is the raised bed garden urn. Why don't more garden centers carry pansies in the fall? I can't find any in my area. Pansies? That's like a super common a staple, one. I would think. Yeah, well, that's a bummer. I'm sorry about that. I didn't think that that was a hard one to find. Every area is different though. Like, yeah. you know, some people will just do mums or- I wonder, you know, some areas probably have a really short fall season. I wonder if some places just feel like it's not even worth it to bring things in. Could be. Yeah. Suzanne said, will the hydrangea blooms continue to color up after you've cut them? No, once you cut them, um, they'll pretty much stay the same color in my experience anyway. I think they need to be on the plant and, and get some cold temperatures in order to color. That's kind of like the signal when, when nights start to get longer and temperatures get cooler. Um, yeah, that's when they start to color up. Comparison of the different augers I use for planting was the next video that we um, put up. And that was just showing all of the different augers that we use, what we use them for, what sizes work for us the best, what sizes aren't like the easiest to use, like the really tall ones we thought would be amazing, but they really aren't. So we were kind of hoping to help steer you in the right direction. If you were in the market looking for an auger or kind of interested, hoping to save you some money, 
based on our experience because you might also think, ooh, you know, a 40 inch auger will be great because then I won't have to, or 48 inch, I won't have to bend over at all. Well, it turns out it's way too high and you can't get the right leverage and it actually tires you out more. Hurts than, your back even more. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we just went over all of those things with you guys. And then we took the augers that I use the most often out onto the new property, dug some holes, showed you what they look like and what size of plant containers they fit. Claudia said, Laura, your awareness of simple things like clearing back the dirt so people can see the edge of the hole is awesome. You never um or er. I feel like I am a lot. You speak fluidly and confidently, and then with Aaron's camera and editing skills, your, your videos literally put many TV gardening shows to shame. I'm forever thankful of your skills and knowledge and that you're willing to share your unfolding garden with us. Thank you, Claudia, that was very sweet. I think the reason why it seems like I speak, speak, <laughs> speak, <laughs> speak fluently and confidently is that I know we can edit videos. That's why I don't do lives very often. But you're pretty good. Um, I mean, sometimes you have to do multiple takes. A lot of times you do multiple takes, but you're also really good in the moment as well. <sighs> I, th I feel like you are really good at being able to roll. Better than I used to be, yeah. still not great. It depends on the day too. I think you're pretty good at it. No, that's nice. <laughs> You're being, you're being nice. You might think that you're bad, but I think if you compared yourself to just like most anyone else, you're really good. You're comparing yourself to like a version of yourself that doesn't really exist. Cause you know that you could be flawless maybe. And that's what you're shooting for is like this flawless. Like I always do everything in one take. Oh, I wish that would be, that would but be But that's so just not awesome. reality. No, and it's so not reality. when you look at yourself just realistically, you're actually really good at what you do. Well, thanks. Gary said, I bought an auger to plant bulbs. However, I have many trees and roots. The roots made it difficult and I gave up. Any suggestions? It gets hard with roots. Uh, the heavy duty tip that you can add to the bigger ones. So the four inch size, actually, did you order a four inch auger? You know what? Um, Greg emailed and the owner of Power Planter and he thanked us for the video. Cause like you mentioned, we weren't working with them. Uh -uh. Um, and I think he's sending a Is couple. He? Yeah. Okay, because I realized during this video like it wasn't until we lined them all up and i thought you know what we've been using the three inch augers for our bulbs and they're it's such a pain because our bulbs that we get from color blends are so big which mm -hmm. is awesome they're so big that they don't even fit in a three inch size hole so we need that four inch size auger but then you're jumping up into a bigger size drill so keep that in mind but if you get a four inch with a heavy duty tip that helps get through roots like i mean Big roots, probably a little bit difficult, but... Yeah, it'll it'll tend to bounce when you uh, hit a root. Like, m more often than not, it won't, like, stop. But you can also set your chuck as well. Um, no, is that the right word? Your... Not the chuck. No, the chuck is what you put your yeah. um, thing we into and tighten it down. We never can remember it. No. There's a little dial with yeah. numbers on the top of the drill. <laughs> I feel like I should know what the name of it is. I think most... You know the little it... dial on the front, yeah. like, right after the chuck. So you want to put it on the highest number. Well, not, not necessarily the setting There's not the one, highest two, number necessarily because then it'll if you hit any right. resistance yeah. at all it'll stop ours is usually like on a seven yeah I somewhere around say. there but if you have it on there's usually like a drill setting which means that it'll never turn off and yeah, that's, that's a bad idea bad idea especially with roots because then you'll hit something and it'll stop and then it'll it'll break your wrist mm -hmm. um i feel like hold on let me just find out what the name of that thing is so that i say it correctly I think bouncing up to that bigger size, it's really comfortable to use height wise for me anyway, I'm five, four. Uh, but I think that the whole size will be nice because they, I won't feel like I'm shoving bulbs, like really shoving them in the holes to get them to fit. I think it'll be a better fit. And I think that that heavy duty tip, the ability to have that on the end of the auger will help just drive it down a lot quicker, make the job a lot easier. It's called the torque control. The torque control. We so usually have set on a seven. Every if, drill is different though. Yeah, if you have it on the drill setting, which oftentimes is just like, it looks like a drill bit. Yeah. Uh, that's like maximum torque mm -hmm. and it won't stop if it hits resistance. What's it called again? Torque control? Torque? You just told me. What? I was gonna say it over and over and over again until I remembered. Oh. What is it? Torque control. It's torque control, torque control, torque control. It'll lose all meaning if you just keep saying it over and over again. Torque control. Con you have to say it. Say it weird? Yeah. Is that a method for rem remembering things? I don't know. <laughs> Jen said, how do augers do with rocks? I always run into a few in digging holes. Now, I do occasionally run into a rock. You guys are probably laughing at me, those of you who have rocks, but I do occasionally run into rocks. I do at my parents' house, that's for sure. Their house is like built on a hill of rocks. 
it is harder. And the same thing, right? You want the torque setting not to be so much that if you hit a rock, it's not going to yeah, shut I think, off. So I've watched some videos of people who hit a lot of rocks. And the truth is, is that digging in rocks, using anything sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you have to get a pickaxe out or a digging bar or something. Like no matter what, it's not going to be a good time. <laughs> I think that with the power planter augers, it's actually a better worse time <laughs> than a lot of the other things that you'd have access to like yeah. like a pickaxe or don't you think it tends to almost grab a side and it helps kind of like almost yeah kind of like it, dis out? it dislodges some of the rocks and you have to sort of like stop you know mm -hmm. grab one of the rocks that it dislodged get it out of the hole keep going a little bit it'll mm -hmm. it'll kind of work up some more of the rocks um but you'd have to do that anyway if you had a shovel it may even be a situation where you want somebody with a shovel and a a power planter mm -hmm. some ones somebody with the shovel getting the rocks out somebody else we do that yeah we do yeah just to get the excess soil out when we're doing a great I'll, big um, hole i'll put you i'll a put video? a couple videos like that are playing maybe while we're talking uh -huh. that kind of just show it's not like there's no magic bullet that yeah. like oh this is amazing it just like tears through the rocks right that doesn't and exist and if your rocks are this big yeah it just it is it's what just it is not dig through it you're gonna have to use dynamite or something yeah our neighbor used to do that. Really? Yep. Well, every New, new Year's and Fourth of July, he set off a or light a stick of oh, dynamite. Oh, he wasn't actually like breaking up rocks with no. dynamite. <laughs> no. I was like, dang, that's. I don't know what the tradition sort of was there, but we all like, like brace for it. Like on, uh, was it Mary Poppins when the cannon goes oh, yeah. off and yeah, everybody yeah. has to like hold all the delicate things. Oh, funny. Yeah. Leah said, "Great video. Question: Which auger do you use to plant the big trees you've been planting? I'm going to get." I'm going to be planting several and I have the same soil as you, Central Oregon High Desert. Thanks for all the tips and great information. When we're planting the big trees, we try to organize to where we get all the big trees at kind of the same time-ish. And then we rent a skid steer with a three foot auger, 36 inch auger. It's got what, like the right strength. Which is like the biggest <laughs> that yeah. I think you can even get, but it's so nice to get the three foot auger, 36 inch. Yeah. Uh, because then even if your tree is a lot smaller than that like you were talking about you know filling the whole area with fluff which i don't i've heard isn't necessarily the best it, it feels like it should be the best thing for your tree yeah we've got a neighbor who digs like massive holes he, he'll be <laughs> yeah, he digs so he'll be planting like a normal tree and he'll dig a five foot deep hole because <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get past the hard pain you know what though? He has good luck with trees. He does. So like you can't even knock him. It just seems a little overkill. He's like down in the hole digging in yeah. for his little tree. Do what you want, you know. If you want to dig hey. a five foot deep hole, you go for it. Now the 36 inch auger is really, really handy. It's fast. Um, I wish we had a machine that could do that, but it's likely after a certain amount of time, we're not going to be planting things with that big of root balls. I mean, the time is limited yeah. or the days are numbered where we'll be planting stuff that big. Um, We've also used the nine inch and just uh, drilled like three, like three holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that does work. But, as and well. then in that situation, you really do kind of need a, another person with a shovel. Yeah. So you're kind of breaking up the hard pan, and then that person is just shoveling out the loose, mm -hmm. you know, powdery yeah. uh, dirt that you're creating with the auger. Well, consider the time versus the cost of a skid steer with an auger. Yeah. So a skid steer with an auger is what, 300 bucks standard kind of for the day. Right. They come, they drop it off. They take it off the, the trailer. You have it for the whole day, $300. You have 25 holes to dig, let's say. You can get the holes dug in about an hour and the trees planted probably in an hour or two. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at three hours of work versus digging 25 holes by hand or even using the auger to help you with that. You imagine the the toll would that days. would take yeah i mean so worth it if you can coordinate you know to have the trees you're going to plant if you're doing a big project do it all in one fell swoop instead of or at least rent the skid steer and dig all your holes you know yeah. and then slowly plant your trees so worth the time or the money so worth the money for the time savings you get uh, okay nancy said if you wanted a nine inch hole drilled wouldn't it be easier to use a seven inch followed by the nine inch auger We've done that before. We yes, it is. It, however, because a seven inch has that heavy duty tip, that's probably why, I mean, you can just zip down with that thing and then put the nine inch, but power planter is coming out with a nine inch. They let us know nine inch auger with that heavy duty tip. In fact, I think they might not even offer the nine inch without right. that tip on it, which is smart. Uh, so I think that's not going to be necessary, hopefully. 
But yes, yeah. de- it's like drilling a pilot hole. Right. Definitely makes it easier. But then you have to have two drills, which, you know, luckily we have. But I would only really think of like landscapers as the type of people that would have multiple sizes. Uh-huh. You know, a regular homeowner, it may not be justifiable unless you have a really big project to plant a lot of things. It's nice to collect tools like that over the years, though, as you find need for them. Yeah. Because you always find need for them again. you got to store them, too. Yeah, you, you do. Know, there's the cost there. Yeah. Connor said, how long do these last for you? I know you're using them a lot. And then it looks like Aaron has included a picture of a yeah, sheared I, off. Yeah, I did that for <laughs> Ken that? so that he could put it on the screen. Um, so, okay, before, when we bought the 9-inch auger, they didn't used to come with that... Uh, that that's why adapter yeah so the hex was just built into it it's too much torque yeah it was too much and it broke off and power planter just sent us a new one yeah but um they have gone to this new adapter like tube Uh with the adapter so that way if you break it it's a 20 dollar you know i think that's what they're charging for that adapter is Mm -hmm. 20 bucks versus a whole new versus an entirely new yeah auger huh veronica said would augers work in clay soils and Aaron has included a couple of links, <laughs> videos, I'm assuming, yeah. of augers and clay I've, soils. I've seen a couple of videos of people use them in like r- clay, clay soil. Really? And again, Does it's it, like... Does the soil come out in like a, a little yeah, kind of. auger shape? Yeah. Like nothing is good. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything that that works in clay that's like, oh man, this is, works like butter. Mm-hmm. But of all the things that there are, Power Planter does pretty well. I think you are limited by how powerful your drill is. Mm. So if you go out there with an underpowered drill, yeah, it's not going to dig. But mm-hmm. the limitation is not going to be on the power planter. You know what I mean? It's going to be on the drill. Mm. Next video is making a bright and bold arrangement from the cut and, flo- the cut and flower garden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the last video from this week. So uh, I went out into the cut flower garden, and my goal for this project was to incorporate corn. That was, like, my only thing. I Well, I wanted to use some bright colors, so I grew... A lot of bright colors like our cut flower gardens full of just random things that I wouldn't normally put in my flower beds because maybe it's a little too bright like I use Spartacus dahlias which are the big bright red ones in that arrangement wouldn't look great in our flower beds but look awesome out there altogether but I really just wanted to use our glass gem corn I wanted to incorporate that somehow that was kind of my challenge for that arrangement and it ended up turning out really pretty it's still actually on our island a little wilted at this point but um, still several days later still looking pretty good you just got to look at it from side eye just go by it quick it looks pretty good um anyway jennifer said do you ever get flowers and they don't work or get too many or not enough what do you do in these situations so i planted a whole row of lily bulbs total duds i had a bunch of them come up but they've only come up about this far and then there was like a huge lily bloom <laughs> like tiny little itty bitty stem huge lily bloom. I do feel like one, I waited way too long to plant those and it's way too wet of a situation out there. They need to be on their own. And it was really just in an effort to get the bulbs in the ground somewhere. I put them out there because I really couldn't figure out with how much we've got going on around here. Um, I couldn't really figure out a permanent home for them because so much is going to be changing or is changing right now. Um, so that was a dud. Um, Do I get too many? If I ever have too many plants, we give a lot of things away, a lot. Um, So whatever friends and family don't want, like whatever, when we clean out our barn or clean out the greenhouse or whatever, and we've got extras, uh, they usually get snapped up really fast. Whatever doesn't get taken by family or friends, usually you put it out for free on Marketplace and somebody comes and gets it. Mm -hmm. So that's a really great way, really great way to deal with an excess. And that's what we do with produce as well. So anything that we produce here that's excess for us, family and friends, uh, we donate. So it's, yeah. A good thing. Nikki said, I've been wondering if you eat the corn or is it just ornamental? It's so pretty. I grew it for ornamental purposes. I really wanted to see what it would do. I've never grown that variety. One of you guys sent me the seed and so I had fun just trying it out. Um, And I like to decorate with it. You know, we'll toss some ears of it around for fall um, in the house or we'll use it in wreaths or in flower arrangements like I did. You can eat it like popcorn is a good way to, to use that, or you can grind it into a flour. I'm not sure it's great to eat like you would sweet corn. Maybe it is, I don't know. Have no experience with that. Demi said, who captured and edited the intro? I demand to know. I was having a horrible day, but then I saw this and my heart melted. It was so beautiful. Aaron captured all of that. Yeah, and then Ken and I both edited it. Yeah, so that was, it but was mostly so Ken. fun. Yeah. 
Um, but you had the cameras out there. You were doing all the camera work for that, yeah. that one. There's a specific quality when the good cameras come out, like the, the way it looks. And it's just flower arranging and being able to do that sort of project from a space that you've worked on is such a treat anyway. And then being able to have Benjamin out there, you guys, that's one of my, like the biggest blessings of doing what we do is that we get to have our kids here all day every day like we get to be around our kids so much and they get to be incorporated or they incorporate themselves however much they want to um, in what we're doing and it's just such a huge huge blessing like if nothing else was awesome I mean I would keep doing what we do it's all awesome like I feel like what we do is like we're so lucky um, but I would continue doing what we do for that one benefit alone it's huge to me. Anyway, so having him out there was really fun. He gets really into it. He really wants to work the pruners. <laughs> I have to be a little bit careful. Those are sharp. Yeah. So I have to show him like where to cut. He knows how to carry them with the blades facing down and all of that business, but uh, he likes to be involved. Patricia said, I was wondering if you could share what your average day is like, RE home, family, gardening, with both of you being tougher. Tougher. Do you share the household chores? I don't know, with both of you being tougher. Uh, Either way. Do you share the household chores? I think is what she's going for. Washing floors, bathrooms, etc. Do you have routines for your family and house as you do with your garden, i.e. morning routines, evening routines? Let me just start by telling you what we have help with because I think that that's what everybody wants to know. Yeah. Because especially lately, I've seen a little bit of rumbling about, you know, somebody will ask, how do you do it all? Well, I don't. There's no way a person can do it all. And um, we have never tried to hide the fact that we have help. So one of the first things Aaron and I did in our marriage, we uh, hired somebody to help us clean our house because that's the only thing you and I thought about was cleaning. Yeah. Like you didn't want to do it as often. I mean, it's pretty typical, typical. And I was a little bit more type A about it. Right. And we decided, you know what, we're going to work this into our budget. Um, to have somebody help us clean on a fairly consistent basis and it eliminated that problem and we don't fight about anything else so it's really lovely if you can make that happen i mean we for 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 went uh forfeited <laughs> forfeited other things in order to budget that in at the time and we still have the same gal trisha has been with us she for pretty much the whole time and we've been married for 15 years. It I think wasn't we got... necessarily forfeiting, I don't feel like. The way I justified it in my mind was I would rather work overtime, which for... I think we both had access to overtime. We both worked overtime, but you maybe, I worked for overtime for plants a lot of the time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I was like, oh man, I would totally rather work at my job longer than uh -huh. clean the house. Yeah. And I could make more money, especially when you're making overtime because it's time and a half. Mm -hmm. It's like that's more money than cleaning the house. So right. my time is better spent anyway working overtime at my job as opposed to, yeah. like, I don't want to, I just don't want to clean the house. I think we were kind of in the same boat on that yeah. one. So it's not like you're forfeiting something necessarily. You're just deciding to spend your time mm -hmm. doing something else. Right. And since we both had, we were in a position to where we could work overtime, mm -hmm. it was kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. And, and we didn't been, have kids. So like, yeah, well, we didn't you know, have kids in the first 12 years we were married. Yeah. Uh, and that was one of the better decisions we ever made was to have Trisha help us out. And she's actually here right now yeah. <laughs> helping us out. We've been really lucky to have Trisha and Eddie, her husband. We have created quite the relationship with them. And Eddie does a lot. And Trisha. They both do a lot of odd jobs for us, too. Like they, Eddie general the... Hartley. Yep. Um, he lined everybody up and had everything working on that. And he is putting together our cut flower shed. Uh, all those things, the berry beds, the root cellar, the wainscoting in Benjamin's uh, bedroom, the picket fence around our our raised bed garden, the raised beds. Yeah. So many things Eddie does, Eddie and Trisha together. Uh, and it's just been and They seem to enjoy that nice. too. Yeah, they and seem Trisha to like helps to my do parents out too. So I think Trisha was helping my parents, as long as I can remember, Trisha has worked in some capacity for my parents and she works down at the garden center too mm -hmm. like just all over the place they know all kinds of stuff and they're really good at what they do um so we also have paul outside full time um so he's here five days a week all year round and he helps us keep things together because we film every single day of the week we film six days a week most of the time um and so we have to have somebody to help us and then we usually have somebody else like um part-time like for help us yeah. with odd jobs um we'll have people in and out for stuff like that but we have like as our solid you know and then ken of course helps edit videos and we have help with the kids mm -hmm. so 
Like, please. It takes, it takes a team. It takes a team, and we've got an excellent team. And honestly, like, we couldn't do it without a team at this point with the amount we're putting out and the projects we want to, to do. Um, and I just don't want anybody, you know, comparing their life with what we're getting done because you're not seeing what's going on behind the scenes. When behind the scenes, there's just like a hub of, you know, people working on things to get things done. Um, and we still, I mean, nothing is perfect either. Like, you're only seeing this much of our garden space. You know, you're not seeing the powdery mildew and the burned leaves on the geranium that I can see right in front of me in this pot. Like, I would groom that up before I took a picture of that area. So, you know, that's what social media is a little bit hard that way mm -hmm. because you don't really want to portray, like, negativity or the junk of life or the stuff that's ugly. You want to, you know, show the We try to be things. as real as possible, but there, there are things that we intentionally leave out. Yeah. Like everyone does. Yeah. You know. If we get in a disagreement during a video. Yeah. If, we, yeah. We don't post if, that. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> when we get in a disagreement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't post those kinds of things, and but it's normal and it's natural. Um, so anyway, I mean, that said, we do have a team of people that help us, and um, our daily routine though, like we we work quite a bit though. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, we're here with we're with our kids, and I think that's why we feel like maybe it's not so much work all the time because we can work it in around how things are going in the One house. One thing that I would like to eliminate at some point is part of our routine that I hate is that we spend like close to three hours every night after the kids go to bed, or sometimes we have to start it right before they go to bed, and we get the video up for the next morning. And I, I wish we could somehow get that Shift done that. earlier in the day. But the problem is we're working earlier in the day and we're trying to get stuff done because uh -huh. we have childcare and we're trying to, you know, get as much work done as we can. So we just kind of shift that toward the end of the day. So the kids go to bed and then, you know, we have to, I have to review the video. You mm -hmm. have to review the video, make any changes yeah. that we want and then start uploading it. You know, so it's like, it can take three hours to get mm -hmm. every night to get the video up for the next morning. And I, yeah. Saturday some nights point. are kind of nice at this point. Because, well, but now we've got the recap yeah, but on, I think, <laughs> on Sundays. Uh, I think the recap will most of the time have done. Yeah, maybe. Except for yesterday's that we didn't, we posted it way late in the day because we hadn't even watched it yet. Right. <laughs> um, I think if we just did that incremental, incrementally throughout the week and had it done before Saturday, maybe, you know. Yeah. Things have gotten way better though. Like the whole process of everything is oh, done yeah. and I think you improve over time and you learn from how things are going and like you really want to go down to five days a week posting at some point I think I think it will be necessary for us to you know stay the course to to go down to five days I think sometimes that getting that sixth video on our main channel is just too much of a push only sometimes I feel like it's most of the time it's pretty good I feel yeah, like most maybe. of the time we end the week ahead, like starting the week with a, you know, I don't know. Anyway, you guys don't care about <laughs> all of that. We could talk about this for a long time. Need to pour another cup of coffee though. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, we will have some fun videos for you. I'm sure you'll see the greenhouse project with Jenny and Jerry before this video goes out. Um, and I apologize in advance or not in advance if we did had to skip a day or two this week based <laughs> on our project schedule this week. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.